As the Lyrians passed a cemetery marching along its ivy-covered wall, they heard mourners wailing pitifully to a priestess's moving song. The soldiers dutifully lowered their heads. Their minds sought out fallen comrades and kin, and they wondered whom else the war would yet claim. <clears throat> Listen, said Gascon, stirring me from her own meditation. I think I'll veer off for a bit. What for? To offer your condolences? In a manner of speaking. But just go on. I'll rejoin you soon. Meave nodded in agreement, then made as if to ride on. Yet Gascon had hardly entered the cemetery when the Queen turned and followed. Gascon quickly realized he was not alone. Ah, oh, Meave. Had I been plotting to do you no good, I'd not have announced I was sneaking off to do it. What do you mean? Come now, Meave, don't play the fool. You don't trust me, so you followed. Probably thought I'd commune with Epdahi in some crypt. Nay, better, the Conclave of Mages. Well, rest assured then. For if I truly had something I wanted to conceal, I dare say you'd not have noticed me slip off. I was merely curious to see what you would do here. Ah, oh, indeed. It is rather curious what folk do in cemeteries. Play tiddlywinks, perhaps? Or take in the sun? Gascon, I've grown used to you bending the rules of decorum, but now you overstep, sir. You overstep. Oh, will you have me flogged? Hold your tongue, sir, or I shall indeed. Splendid. Now tell me why you've come here. <sighs> if you absolutely must know, then follow me. Gascon led Meave through the ruins of a mausoleum, past its decapitated statues, past ancient gravestones effaced, past sarcophagi smashed to pieces. Whose is it? Could it be... Yes, Meave. My family's vault. The Brossards. The Brossards? Wait. The Brossards? The very same. Traitors who in 1258 revolted against King Reginald, your late husband. The earth lie lightly upon him. An error, most certainly. We paid dearly for it. Reginald had no mercy, decimated the family. As you can see, 
didn't even spare the dead. I was outside, away from the house. It is the only reason I survived. I was eight at the time, stripped of title and home. Well, I'm sure you can guess the rest. Frankly, do my damnedest not to think on it. But the wall, the cemetery, seeing them awoke all the old demons. Your crest, I seem to recall a pointer. <sighs> the Duke of Dogs. Now I understand. The Brossard's trial I remember well. Reginald was angry. He prodded and pushed. Too far. The sentence was cruel, spiteful. I felt it all, but said nothing. I'm so very, very sorry, Gascon. Ah, water under the bridge. And the past's a thing none of us can change. The past, no, but the present? I could rebuild your family's tomb. All deserve to rest in peace. Maeve, the war nears its end days now, and you'll have more urgent expenses. So I shall pay for this now. I'm grateful, Gascon, and indebted, vastly. Let me do this. Let me pay my debt in part, at least. I thank you. Gascon remained silent the rest of the day. When the force halted for the night, he sat secluded in his tent. But by the morn, he was his witty, mirthful self again. His family's final resting place would be returned to its former glory. This he knew, and it seemed to lift a weight from his mind. He could now reconcile with his family's tragic past. Good mother, grant him eternal peace. Oh, why have they left us? Milka, why? Move that candle. To the left. No, no, higher. Oh, good. Waiting for a personal invitation? Damn! Uh, my boots have got sand or plenty in them. The Queen!
Hundred and one, hundred and two, hundred and three. Fuck our asses moving. Hundred and fifty two, hundred and fifty four. Without hesitation. Just that is perfectly usable. Hail Hertha. Abolish to your command. Wise choice. Proto dum anime est. Des est. Discipline. That is what you folk lack. Yep. 
My prescription, a bit of blood setting. Wise choice. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Hmm, a highly curious case. Thing about slings, they hide well. I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. Not going into the tray already, are we?
The Devil's Tower. We draw near, Your Grace. No sign of villain yet, far as I can see. Unsurprising. Prompt he never was. The Queen had chosen to meet Willem at Devil's Tower, and not without purpose. The structure stood on an aisle, so no foe could approach without first exposing themselves on a narrow bridge. The aisle had little vegetation midst which to conceal a large force. A small unit could evade detection. Altogether, not much to fear. No escorts were your terms, began Gascon, with a hint of mischief. But... Better safe than sorry, I always say. What are you suggesting? Yours truly, and four chaps, behind the walls. Give a signal, any signal, and we'll leap to your side. Meave struggled with her conscience. There was no honor in Gascon's plan, but prudence, certainly. In the end, she nodded in agreement, though not without compunction. Willem arrived soon after. The heavily armored cavalry he had in tow clearly there to boost his courage. He left them at the foot of the bridge and rode across alone. A stiff wind from the river nearly made off with his ermine fur cloak. Willem and the mother who'd borne him stood face to face. They gazed into each other's eyes, waiting to see who would look away first. When neither did, Meave broke the silence. Time flies and I have a kingdom to liberate. No need to drag this out. What's this about? Tell me. I thought my messenger already did. Oh, he did. And how? Willem I wishes to arrange a truce. Only, Willem I is in no position to parley on an equal footing. Willem I can, at most, offer his unconditional surrender because Willem I's losing this war. Yes, Mother. I am. And I see that by losing I've at last made you content. Don't play the victim. What next? Will you say you turned cloak because mommy showed no warmth? Displayed no feelings? It would be unfair any such judgment. You did show feelings. Chiefly enmity, contempt. But that's not why I betrayed you. No, I simply disagreed with your choices, assessments. I had every right to do what I considered just and good. And I had every right to voice my view, which you ever ignored. <sighs> Yet this is neither the time nor the place to discuss that. Let us parley as strangers. I'm losing, you say. And you're right. But I haven't lost yet. And have no intention to surrender. I am ready, however, to renounce my fealty to the Empire and pledge my forces to you. As long as you fulfill my conditions. Mm-hmm. Let me hear them. First, you will not rescind the reforms I've authorized already, any of them. Second, you will guarantee both my safety and that of my advisors. Third, I shall remain your heir and next in line for the throne. These terms I cannot accept. Well, I had to try, Mother. Yet I can't deny your courage either. Come here. Look me in the eye. This couldn't have been easy. No, it wasn't. I trust when the time comes, you'll show the same nerve on the battlefield. I shall seek out your banner. Let the gods then settle our dispute once and for all. Goodbye, Mother. Willem bowed, turned, and walked away. Meave's anger burned still in her gut, beneath a heart now heavy with grief. Soon thereafter, Meave's army set out towards Rivia Castle. It would not be long now before the decisive battle.
Your Grace, said Reynard, saluting and clicking his heels. Peasants from the Scala region have arrived at camp. Supplicants, wishing to deliver a plea to your person. Meave sighed. Supplicants, trials, audiences. All aspects of queendom she did not miss. Very well, bring them here, she replied. And instruct them to be brief, with no digressions. The band of commoners was led by a sturdily built beekeeper dubbed Ethelred, son of Theobald. Finding himself in the Queen's presence, he fell to his knees and waved his arms in his best impression of proper etiquette. Oh, my lady, the Queen, your gracious mightiness! Take pity on us tillers and toilers! Was all around leaving us but scraps to live off and belly that, to be honest. So we beg you, don't do it. Don't raise the levers. We can't pay more than... What? Meave interrupted. What the devils are you talking about? What? Your decree? One they nailed to our notice board. The peasant said, sheepishly pulling out a parchment and pointing to the relevant paragraph with his rough finger. We, Queen Meave, do hereby proclaim that if our throne we shall recover, the tallage, murage and pavage we shall raise threefold. The expenses of this war, for to compensate at the cost of the common folk. Meave and Reynard exchanged astonished glances. They had issued no such decree. Yet the document bore her signature and seal. Perhaps it was Willem's doing. Impossible, Meave said firmly. My son sank low, but not so low as to forge my name. Then who fabricated this decree? The Nilf Guardians. The Queen replied without hesitation. They have access to my seal, to my scribes. They wish to spread fear, uncertainty and doubt, turn my folk against me. And they are liars without any honour. The Queen tore the falsified document to shreds. Knowing this would solve nothing, she had to find the printers churning out these fakeries and end their run.